Hey there, welcome to Sin Seeker. My name is Luke. Uh, let's see, going a little off the beaten path today. This is a Korg Mod Wave, uh, one of the Mark 1s. And uh, what this video is about really is I am going to use the Tall Dog Conversion Kit uh, from Tall Dog Electronics. Uh, it was a Kickstarter I backed, um, and it provided a uh, basically a replacement. The, the um, enclosure here is mostly plastic. Um, the keys are real light, and I don't like the key bed. And I want to turn this into a desktop uh, unit. I want to remove the keys. And uh, Tall Dog did a Kickstarter where you can uh, uh, basically, this is a really chunky, heavy aluminum enclosure. Uh, I'm no judge of manufacturing quality as far as like, you know, the details and, you know, what makes one aluminum milling better than another. But I'll tell you, this thing's heavy. No, there's, n there's like no flex in it. It feels really good. And um, I want to mount this in here. And so what I'm going to do is um, do the work and uh, basically uh, just record it all, time lapse the boring parts, uh, and then just, you know, be you know a record of what happens when a total novice this is me i i can barely solder i'm not good with tools um, this is described as a medium difficulty project right so i'm you know middle-aged dad gonna try and pull the electronics electronics out of here and mount it in there using their instructions so i guess it's more of a i don't do reviews right but uh, this is going to be a record of my experience doing the tall dog conversion kit. Now, ironically, this has been coming for a year or so, maybe two years um, in the works. Um, and uh, just like last week, Korg announced that they're actually uh, releasing these as 19 rack, 19 inch rack compatible units. This itself is like 22 inches and it will not fit in a rack. Um, but it, the conversion kit turns it into a desktop unit with a visa mount on the back. And they've got like wings for turning it into the, you know, um, the angle you can have if you have multiple you can stack them up um, so irony is irony but if you if you find these old units with the keys on them tall dogs conversion um, based on what you see in this video you can decide if you want to do that or if you want to go the 19 inch route um, but uh, yeah let's get started uh, so I set that aside this is the best part so the assembly instructions are behind a very nice QR code. I'll throw up screenshots of the uh, assembly instructions. They're super clear, and I like it that I like it when they send everything. <laughs> Every it's like you know I've assembled a lot of IKEA furniture, <laughs> and then not great quality furniture, um, and uh, you know I'm used to certain things, but. Having a very clear, obvious set of assembly instructions is great. Um, and from what I can see on the website, I'm happy with it. You'll see screenshots of that, right? But there's swag. Um, who started the whole, we're going to send little bits of candy with your synthesizer purchases? Does any other like tech, like people who are into cameras and stuff like that, when you buy like lenses and camera gear from companies uh, like boutique, you know, small manufacturers, do they just include snacks? I, I don't know if that's a sin thing or if that was because Sweetwater started doing it or did somebody else do it and Sweetwater copied them? I don't know. All I know is when I order for Sweetwater, um, they know what my wife likes. My wife gets the candy. <laughs> so the Smarties. Anyway, all right. Uh, so uh, swag, business swag. I don't know what that is. I have a feeling it's the backing for maybe this heat sink. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, all right, but here are our parts. We'll lay them all out. Tubing, include some tools, Allen wrenches, various screws and washers. Um, these look like standoffs, nylon standoffs of some kind. Two zip ties, a few things like that. Uh, and let's pull up the instructions. I'll edit this down so it's not quite so boring. Okay, so they throw uh, a nice clean parts list up and they're like, please verify that all the parts are in there. And they are, right? All the screws, things like that. All the bits and pieces. 
Um, the one thing that isn't clear is because I'm not an I'm not an you know electronics guy. They call out on the uh, parts list something called release paper. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's this because this feels more like double sided tape to me. Those are the only two things that this is the only ambiguous thing. I didn't know if this is just. <laughs> I don't think it's just trash that was thrown in the bag. It has a purpose. And there's something on the list called release paper. I don't know what that is, um, but I'm going to go Google it so I understand what its purpose is as opposed to just winging it. Okay, so yeah, release paper. Our papers coated with a release agent and are used in a wide range of applications such as for protective uh, protection of adhesive surfaces for various adhesive products and for film forming uh of various rest okay so i suspect this totally feels like um like parchment paper you know one side's very smooth i'm trying not to touch it too much for my, my hands are clean but you know whatever so that's release paper and i'm going to use it to pr protect some adhesive surface probably the back of the heat sink i don't know yet uh, but um, the other thing is i don't know if, if you're in the ocd category that i am kind of in you know jokingly right um, but, uh, whenever there's a detailed set of instructions for assembling something and it's electronics, uh, I read all the instructions through once before I actually disassemble or try to assemble anything. So I'm actually going to pause here. I'm going to go read all of the instructions, uh, to make sure that there's nothing ambiguous that I don't understand. And then I'll Google anything that I don't understand in an attempt to make sure I know what the hell I'm doing you know, as much as I can. I really don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I figure this will be a video that may help others. So anyway, here we go. Okay. Um, another thing is, like I said, I'm not a, an electronics guy, but I, I like to cook. And there's this concept called mise en place. Everything's sort of in its place. And so here are the parts I'm going to need. I've got them laid out. I'm, I got, I'm on a black table. I've got a black sort of blanket underneath me to keep the table from being scratched. The, the synth is black, the parts are black, so we're just going to keep the parts off to the side on something high contrast so I can find everything. A little mise en place. And then a little bowl for any screws or things that I take out of the synth, I'll keep them in here so we don't lose them. Okay, so I finished reading all the instructions. Um, there are, they're detailed, uh, they're amazing. Um, I will, uh, let me show you, uh, I'll, I'll do some screenshots basically. The instructions are are like super detailed with lots of photos. The photos are highlighted with colored rings and lines and arrows, and the colors of those things match the steps, the the sub steps within each main step. So, like in as an example, um, when you're moving the heat sink, there's uh, a few different steps you have to go through to move an arm off the heat sink, and like there's detailed photos of what it looks like from different angles and the motion you have to use is illustrated with an arrow and that arrow is colored the same color as the bullet next to the line of the instruction you're doing. It's awesome. So read the instructions first. One thing I realized uh, reading the instructions is I will need a pair of scissors though. So I was going to do this entirely with just the tools that they included. Um, but the, you do need a uh, pair of scissors uh, for if you're going to salvage the, uh, uh, the old heat sink. These instructions are fully reversible and they have nice, also very detailed instructions on like, how do I save the parts I'm, you know, not using uh, or the parts that I remove and replace with other parts so that I can do it later. And so uh, it's, it's fantastic. To that end, um, I went and grabbed uh, a little toolkit. There is a certain amount of prying um, uh, that it needs to be done. So I am going to, I've got this extra kit nearby with some plastic pry, um, pry bars and stuff for doing, you know, nerd computer service stuff. Uh, so that's there. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. All right, so we're doing a mod wave. The instructions are identical for mod wave, wave state, and op six, except for as far as I can tell, one step has you um, use these extra included plastic spacers if you are converting a um, wave state. Uh, but we're doing a mod wave now, so it shouldn't be that big a deal. Uh, so let's get started. I will time lapse where appropriate or pause or edit where appropriate. Okay. So shut down the synth, disconnect from the power, make sure there's no cables connected to it. All right. So we're, we're good. There we go. 
So, uh, so we're fine. Okay. Uh, flip the device over so the bottom is facing up, right? And be gentle. Use a pad. So I've got the old Star Wars blanket here, right? And they also, I mean, they include a photo. So it's like when they're like, make sure the bottom is facing up. All right. Step three is go get the screwdrivers that they gave you, right? So uh, I've got them over here on my mise en place plate, which I'm just going to move to make it a little easier to get a hold of. Right. All right. So comes with a number, number two uh, screwdriver, uh, 2.5 hex driver, and a two millimeter uh, hex driver. So it's like, go get the tools. Okay, sounds good. Step three is remove the rear screws. Okay, and they're talking about these one, two, three, four rear screws. There's really no need for me to walk you through this. The instructions are so, so detailed. You're not going to need my ass to explain this to you, but I am a total novice at that. So this is going to be documented proof that an idiot can do this. Right. right. And these screws, it even says in the documentation, these screws are threaded so that they go into threaded, they go into threaded holes, right? These aren't the kind that like tap, you know, make their own grooves as they go through. These are threaded holes. So pulling these out, be gentle. Don't force them. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to pause while I do this step. All right. There we go. All right. So those screws are over in a safe place. All right. We're not going to have any uh, Christmas story Ralphie episodes, you know, Oh, fudge. So it should be okay. All right. That's step four. It's nice to even say, uh, later on, we will cover a suggested way to store all of the parts that are needed to reverse the conversion. Like, they, they, nice job. Good job, Dan. All right, step five, remove the bottom screws. And that is one, two, three, four, five, four, five. All right. Uh, again, number two. Okay. So I'm just going to pause while I do this. All right, the, um, the instructions note that because these screws are down in these wells, you may have to actually pick it up and tip it over to get the screws out. But the tool is very slightly magnetized, or at least mine, the one that came with the kit was. So these actually, if you loosen them up completely, lift gently, the screw will come out of the well with it, which is convenient. So now we're flipping back. Again, mise en place, put our tools back. We're going to flip her over. And step six is remove the top screws, okay, which is indicated as one, two, three, four. There's a whole bunch of screws on the top all over the place, and it's quite, they're quite clear. You're just taking these four out. So, and this is with the 2.5 millimeter hex screw they give you, uh, hex driver they give you. So, hang on a second while I do this. All right, so there's the fourth one, the third driver. Now these are, um, it says in the notes that you can note that these are coarse threaded screws. Uh, unlike the ones in the back that were going into pre-threaded recessed holes, these are just driving through the plastic like, like a wood screw drives through wood. Um, so they're a bit crunchy as you're taking them out. They feel a bit gritty and they come out with like little plastic particles on them. So just be aware of that and uh, keep everything clean as you go. All right. Uh, it's nice. The other nice thing about the instructions is there's multiple sort of mouse over pictures that verify, like, here's a close up of the screws that you're removing. So they should look like this. It's nice. All right. Step seven, we're going to lift up the front panel. All right. Whenever possible, avoid touching the exposed circuit boards with your fingers. Okay. I have what are called ham hands, big, big hands. Uh, so I do, uh, <laughs> I'm, whenever they're like lift up, I'm like, okay, we're going to move in the smallest possible amount of movement as we can, because my, I, my concept of a, a little distance is sometimes more than what the manufacturer's idea of a little distance is. So. All right. So step seven, carefully lift up the front edge of the front panel to partially reveal the internal main board and connector cables. Pull up gently on several of the front panel's knobs um, and the mod wheels to begin lifting up the panel. If any of the knobs pop off, just push them back on. Um, all right, so let's do that. So gently lift. Okay, 
there's a little resistance. It's like it it was you know screwed on tightly, so it was happy being there. It's gonna lift. And there's still a little resistance on the back of the panel. I don't want to force it, so I'm not sure. But the photo they've got shows it being like completely open. Um, and they say, be careful, go slow because the front panel is still connected via several cables. Only lift the front edges up as far as the cables will allow. All right, so if I'm, I'm peeking in here, and it feels like something's like tight back here, but I've removed all the screws. So, oh, there we go. So if you run your fingers, once you've got it up a little bit, I've got it like a millimeter or two's clearance here, you can get your finger on the edge and run it back along the edge, sort of lifting the edge up, and that'll make it, that makes it come free. All right, that's better. Okay, so it, it, there, there was a little binding here, but sort of running your hand along the edge, fix that. There's no, it's not glued or anything. But now it's coming up. You have to sort of say, all right, and the other on the other side. There we go. Now we, so the whole panel's actually out, and I'm just sort of raising it up so I can look at it. Um, I can't show you what I see here, but this, it looks exactly like their photo uh, would indicate. Let's see if I can do my best here. All right, the cables are. Uh, do I really want to drag the camera around? I'm going to try and pick this up and show you. I'm going to take a risk for you. All right. This is what we see here. These cables down that where that Y of coppery brown cables, that's the only thing preventing me from lifting this completely out. All right. So just be careful. Don't like, you know, wang on it. Don't try and grab the entire thing. So, okay. So there's an instruction. I hope you can see this. I think you can. These cables here, they're gathered by what the instruction refers to as a captive wire cable tie. And all it is is attached to the case is a stiff piece of black plastic covered wire. And it's looped around the cable, uh, sort of keeping them bound together. And it's like a it's like a um, a twist tie for you know a loaf of bread or something just really thick and heavy, and what you need to do is just go in there, reach in there, and you manhandle it. You simply unbend it, right, and then the cables are loose at that point. Okay. Okay. So once this captive cable tie wire is loose, these cables can move freely, and you can carefully set. The front panel like behind it and just make sure that none of these cables are being pulled on right it's it's there's they're long enough at least in this unit that there's no tension here they're sort of floppy and loose so we go to step eight remove the front panel right so locate the two connectors that are labeled cn2a which has 14 pins that's this one and the photos are clear it's like this one here it's a cn2a and then this one which is uh cn3a CN3A. That's even my old eyes can read those, so that's good. Um, and it, there's a note. It's it should have. Uh, there may have been some people have blue colored circuit boards and some have green, and they detail the the instructions show a blue circuit board, but they're quite clear. They're like you're fine if it's green. It's the same. They're compatible. There's no changes. Nothing's gonna. You're not gonna screw anything up. Um, but we want to disconnect these connectors. All right, and they say disconnect them by firmly pulling each connector away from the board one at a time. Wiggling them a bit from side to side can help. They're held in with friction, right? So my previous experience with electronics uh, knows that my big ass fingers have a hard time getting into these tiny parts and getting enough leverage without bending other components. Like there's some caps here that if I'm gonna go down in here, I don't wanna start bending those and possibly break leads or stress the leads out. Um, so what I will probably do is use a pair of plastic tweezers. I've got a, in my kit here, I've got a wide set of tweezers. Let me go dig them up. Okay, you can maybe call, call me overly cautious, right? But it's, it's held in with friction, but it's very tight. Uh, and so 
what uh, the tweezers, I didn't, I wasn't having enough leverage to do it and I didn't want to just muscle it straight out. It says that you can pull, don't, it says don't pull on any individual wires, right? Because there's all the wires leading in. You can grab all of them at once and apply sort of equal pressure across all the wires and lift it out. But there's a lip around the, the, uh, the plug, like a, the, inherently there's like a molded lip around it. And, uh, you can get it out, um, but uh, that's one. Let's try this one here. I'm wiggling a little bit back and forth. Ooh, this one's a lot tighter. Do one side and then the other. That seems to be working. Ugh. Come on. There we go. I hate it when it, <clears throat> when it does that. Uh, finally freeze. That looks fine, and I don't think I pulled any of the cables out. I was pulling on, there's a lip on here, on both ends. You can just sort of wiggle it out. Well, that was nerve-wracking, but uh, I think I got it out okay. Uh, lift and remove the entire front panel away from the plastic enclosure, now that all the cables that were holding it in place have been disconnected. Okay. And... Uh, basically, we can move the enclosure off to the side for now. So let's do that. All right, step nine. Remove the front panel cables. All right, and they've got it, the instructions have it inverted. They, like, flip it around. All right, flip over the front panel so the circuit board side is facing up. Disconnect the two cables from their housings. Uh, on the front panel. These connectors are the same as the ones from the previous step and you can use the same techniques. Okay, this board is less sensitive than the main board. It's still a good idea to touch it as little as possible with your fingers. All right, put the two remove cables aside for the moment. We'll return to them later. All right, and then carefully put the front panel aside in a safe place. So, let's take these suckers off, shall we? Ah, thank you. All right, good, done. All right, put these cables aside. I'm going to add them to my mise en place plate over here. And this can be set aside in a safe place. The safest place is probably over here uh, on the nice, amazingly cushioned dog bed that my Pichon never uses. All right, next step. All right, step 10, secure the keyboard cable. All right, so let's go back to our enclosure here. I love how they clean up after themselves in these instructions, right? Locate the, uh, the connector labeled CN8, which is this one here, all right? Uh, it has 16 pins along the right edge of the main board. This is the keyboard connector, right, for the keyboard. Uh, this, is where this conversion is removing the keyboard. Certainly not going to need this, right? Um, so you want to be able to revert this, right? So we're not going to destroy anything. We're going to disconnect uh, the keyboard connector from the main board the, the same way that we disconnected the other ones. So it's going to be fraught with peril and stress and like, oh my God, am I breaking shit? Um, this is the main board and they warn that this board is more sensitive than the other one. So try to really try to not touch the parts of this board if you can. And then we're going to re-secure it once it's disconnected so it doesn't flop around with this thing. So let me do a little disconnection here. <clears throat> all right. I didn't break anything. All right, all the wires are still there. All right, and then we're going to reconnect this with the little cable stay thing. That'll stay there. Great. All right. Next, remove the main board screws. Okay, there are four main board screws. One, two, three, four. We're going to use the number two Phillips driver they gave us. To avoid any potential damage, don't touch any of the components on the main board with the metal screwdriver. Hmm, okay. Um, these screws have coarse threads that are designed for use with plastic. All right, so they'll have little fiddly plasticky bits on them when they come out. So keep things clean. Um, they're identical to the five that you removed earlier from the bottom of the hardware. All right, and they even show you pictures. So let's remove these carefully, only touching the screw with the screwdrivers. All right, step 11, put those screws aside in a safe place. Great. Step 12, remove the main board. 
Handle the main board with caution. Only touch it along the edges whenever possible. Do not touch it. Don't touch any of the chips directly with your fingertips in order to avoid the possibility of damage due to this electrostatic discharge. Now, I don't own one of those wrist wraps, anti-static wraps, so I'm doing this without it. Um, but I'm I'm OCD about it. But I do keep. I'm just going to keep reaching over and touching the uh, the aluminum <laughs> computer or laptop over here that's plugged in. Although it's not grounded, I don't know. I'm not sure. We're we're, we're just be careful. <laughs> Again, I'm not an EE. I know nothing of electronics for really. Like, I understand screws. Uh, we'll see where it goes. But basically, slide the main board slightly away from the rear panel, then lift it up and out of the plastic enclosure entirely. Put the main board down next to the enclosure on your work surface. Okay. Okay. Slide the main board slightly away from the rear panel, touching it by the edges. Don't touch any of the components. Okay, it literally comes out like it would fall out. If I had picked up the keyboard case, this would have just fallen out. All right, so those four screws were the only things holding it in. I'm only touching the edges, and we're going to set it down. Stay cool. May the force protect you. The, the Star Wars wool blanket. All right. All right, that's step 12. Step 13. If you're planning a transfer the serial number on the back of this thing, that's what the transfer sheet is for, the double-sided tape. It's so that you can take the serial number off and stick it on the enclosure. I'm not going to do that. I'm keeping this uh, enclosure in its original packaging. And so if I ever need the serial number, I'll go reference it by pulling it out of the box. I'm not going to transfer the sticker. So you can skip uh, step 14, step 15, and step 16. And 17. Things go a lot faster if you're not transferring the serial number. All right, and we're up to step 18 now. Okay, so this can be stored away in a safe place. I'm going to go put it in the original core packaging that I've got in storage, and that'll be fine. Let's carefully bring this thing back, touching it only by the edges. All right, here's our main board. Uh, and it says, there are two variants of the main board. The older boards, which are marked KLM 55055, which is what I have. So I have the oldest board. Okay, they're colored green, and the newer boards marked with a different number are colored blue. The blue boards are slightly wider than the green ones, but the position of all the screws and the jacks is the same. Great. Um, first gen Op6, Wave State, Mod Wave have green boards. New units like the Mark IIs have blue boards. Uh, the main difference is the, the compute unit, right? The newer boards have a more powerful Raspberry Pi in them. That's fine. Uh, let's see. I've never felt this was an underpowered synth. I've never run out of voices, so I'm mm, not going to worry about it. Um, all right, the compute module is different between the two. It points this out. It like teaches you a lot as we're going through here. Um, this is one of those examples. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. This is like the bullet here is orange, this one's red, this one's black. And if you go to the diagrams, they're highlighted orange, red, if you go to the other alternate ones, right? The, I like that these are highlighted and color-coded to the things. So, okay, for the purpose of the next step, right, we'll find the circular color cutout, which is, using a plastic tie, this little baby right here, okay, this thing. What are we gonna do with this? Step 19, we're gonna break off the circular tab all right, you may notice a wet looking surface. Yeah, it looks a little wet. That's, I think, the flux from those. Stuff. Yeah, it's what it says. All right, this is flux residue on the circuit board. It's totally fine. It's normal. It may or may not have a circular breakaway tab. Mine does. Okay. Um, and basically, it says push the tab back and forth until the central uh, circular piece breaks off entirely, leaving only a large cutout. You can discard the piece that pops out. You're not going to hurt anything by doing this. Okay. So to avoid touching it with my skeezy fingers, I'm going to use a little non-conductive plastic thing, holding it by the edges here. I'm just going to push down on it, and it popped right off. No problems. I didn't hit any of the other parts, and it's this tiny little thing here. Right? And now our board has a hole in it. Okay, So that is step 19. And this can be pitched. We're going to remove the heatsink clip. So there's two clips holding the heat sinks, holding the heatsink down. These little look like tiny little paper clips, little wires. 
the photos in the description are zoomed way in. I'm not going to try. This is an iPhone up here. I'm not going to try and zoom it way, way in. I'm trying not to pick this thing up as much as I can. So see the little paper clip looking wires coming out of the sides of the... Let's see if I can get this to focus. Yeah, no. Uh, we're going to... Those are the clips holding the heat sink in. These little things here. All right. Uh, let's see. They're held in place with uh, bent metal spring clips that latch through little holes cut in the circuit board. All right. One side of the clip is highlighted here in orange. Yeah. All right. Um, it, one side of the clip is simpler. This end is designed to be removed first. All right. So if I'm, I've got the circuit board positioned the way it's positioned in the instructions. All right. And that would indicate that this one is simpler. That's the one they've highlighted in orange. All right. Fine. And the other one is highlighted in red and has an extra bend in it. If I look at it. Yeah. Okay. So what it is, is this clip goes down through the circuit board and back up through the top. All right. And just is shaped like a J, like a fish hook. The one on this side is also shaped like a fish hook, but then has a little tail on it, right? So it's like a little locking piece. So one side looks like a J, the other side looks like an inverted J with an extra hook. All right. Do the simpler one first is what they're telling me here. The, this side, the orange side. All right. Um, all right. So they're retained by a pair of slots. It has a short outer slot and a short inner slot. Basically, I think you push it down. Uh, let's see. The side without the extra bend. Push the clip down through the board until it releases, then allow the clip to compress so that the end can be raised through the longer slot. Okay, so we're pushing it down and moving it over and lifting it out through the wider slot. And their instructions are pretty clear. Yeah, could be maybe this is a place where a video clip showing exactly what the motions are is, is nice. So what we're doing is just touching the edges. We're going to push the clip down and then bringing it back up through the other hole. Okay. So that this this spring clip is one piece. I didn't realize that. I thought it was pushing. I thought it was two different clips. It's actually just one. All right. And then now that this is end, this end is free. You can just rotate it up 90 degrees so it's perpendicular to the board. All right. So you're literally you're doing this, bringing it up, whoop, and then you can easily take it out of the other slot. Okay, so now that I've done it, it's really trivially easy to do, right? Um, but it's easy to overthink, but it's also easy to start on the wrong side. If you try and do the wrong side first, you're just going to be confused and frustrated. It, you have to do this side first so that you can lift it up and get it easily out of the other side. If you try and if you do it wrong and you try and take out the wrong side first, you're going to end up bending the spring or fucking things up. So, all right. So now that the free it's free, put it aside somewhere safe. I'm going to put it in my mise en place plate over here. All right. So let's go to step 21. We're going to remove the original heat sink. All right. So it's stuck to the chip with uh, a gray thermal pad. It's like clay. All right. Pull the heat sink up away from the chip, rotating it slightly while pulling. The heat sink should offer, should be pretty easy to lift off, and it should take the pad with it. Okay, so I am going to lift it up, twist slightly. And it comes right off. The pad is really thick. And you can see the impression of the chip in the pad, all right, um, as well as what looks like hair. And since I don't have any hair and my dog doesn't shed, I can only assume that that is hair from the manufacturer. So that's Korg hair. That might be worth saving. So put the heat sink on the work surface, you know, sticky, sticky pad up, right? And then we go and we get the... Uh, uh, we go get this, which was the the uh, uh, the paper, right? Well, actually, that's the next step. We're just going to leave this somewhere safe. We're going to set it aside in our mise en place. 
All right. Um, there is a little bit of gray residue on the chip. It left snacks. All right. Actually, it left a lot. Um, you know. Well, I mean, it's a layer. It's like a paper thin layer, but it covers the whole uh, top of the chip and a little bit of the in enclosure on the side as well. All right. Uh, so we're going to clean that off, I think, in an upcoming step. Uh, it says the amount of residue may vary. I'm going to call that a lot. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, all right. So go get the silicone paper. That's this stuff. One side is shiny. I'm trying not to touch the whole thing. That's the shiny side. Basically, it's like you can put this sticky, the pad part down on the shiny side. All right. This is because you might want to save this to reverse this later. I really don't plan on it, but I'm going to leave myself the option at least. Um, and it's, uh, it's basically, this will keep it from getting all over the place and sticking to everything else. It'll stick to this, right? Use a pair of scissors, trim the edges of the release paper so they're flush, et cetera, et cetera. Discard the extra, discard the excess. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Step 23, clean the residue off the chip. Now they sent an alcohol pad. Bing. Right, locate the alcohol pad, tear it open, um, and remove the alcohol-soaked pad, and then gently remove any excess thermal pad residue and thoroughly clean the top surface of the, the silver chip. All right, there's no need to scrub, and the alcohol will soften the residue. It, alcohol won't harm any part of the circuit board or any of the components, right? Uh, then discard the alcohol pad and its packaging uh, when done. So let me do this. For various medical reasons, we have a whole bunch of these in our house. And for synth reparation, uh, restoration purposes, I've got a gallon container of like 99.9% .9 pure isopropyl out in the garage. Um, so needless to say, we smell alcohol in our house a lot. All right. And, and not the drinking kind. Um, so there is a lot of residue on this chip. All right. So... I'm just, you know, being, folding the pad over, letting the alcohol sort of get squeezed out onto the chip as I'm rubbing. And the, the stuff comes up and sort of gums up the pad. So you move to a clean part of the pad when it gets too gross. Uh, there's a lot on this side. I'm not scrubbing, I'm just wiping. Um, I'm not... Uh, I'm not really applying any pressure. I'm just doing a repetitive motion and, and letting the fibers and the alcohol loosen it up and pick it up. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm really not pressing much at all. It's um, the center of the chip is raised and the edges are, are recessed, like a reverse bezel, a uh, bevel. And uh, um, I've, you kind of have to be quick when you're using these alcohol pads because it, evaporates right and then it dries up and there's no alcohol left and all you have is um paper scuffing or fibrous pads scuffing things up but um, if it stops feeling cold to your fingers the alcohol might all be gone all right step 23 clean off the chip all right step 24 prepare the new heat sink so this is our new heat sink it's somewhat chunkier than the old one for comparison Here's the old one, all right, new, old. Uh, let's see. Locate it, flip the heatsick over, and carefully remove the blue protective layer from the thermal pad, being careful not to touch the surface of the adhesive with your fingers. I'm going to actually go, I've read all the instructions once, but I'm just going to go refresh my memory by, before I pull this off, look at the next step, which is generally about how do I align this. Uh, on the chip and get it placed because once I I have this terrible fear once I expose a sticky surface that's when it's most likely that I will drop it uh, you know or you know a bug will land on it or something like that right uh, so let me before I expose the sticky stuff what am I going to be doing so you can also while it's still on there you can sort of practice getting it placed where you're where it's going to go right so if it's if there there are instructions here for how you should be aligning it um, before you expose the sticky stuff, you can go practice that a little bit. If you have a blue main board, do one thing. If you have a green one, do another one. I've got the green one. So it says horizontally align the heat sink so that the 
Uh, it is centered relative to the left and right edges of the silver chip underneath it. So that baby, okay. So it's going to be kind of like that horizontally. And then vertically align it so that it's centered relative to the top and bottom edges of the compute module board. All right. So the chip's a little offset, right? Um, so it's not that I want to center it over the chip. I want to center it over the chip horizontally, but I want to center it over the board vertically. So it's going to be kind of like that. Because I think you don't want it hanging off the edge. Like here, it's like hanging off and it may not fit when you put it back in the new enclosure. All right. So lower the heat sink onto the chip and then evenly apply, apply moderate downward pressure to the adhesive to get it stick in place. Okay, so we go back to step 24, which is remove this, and then we're going to position it. And I suck at this too. So let's use our tools. What I end up doing usually is, <laughs> if I'm unlucky, I end up taking the adhesive with it, which is not something I want to do. So use a little tool or a knife or something like that. Peel gently and don't touch the sticky stuff. All right. One more for the medical bin. Okay. So we're going hair. That's, that was a long hair. That was one of my wives. It fell off of me. We'll figure that out later. All right. So this is centered horizontally in the middle of the chip. And then vertically, we want it centered on the board. Pardon my head. Measure twice, cut once, friends. We're there. And then apply, what do they say? What are the exact words? Moderate downward pressure. So not gentle pressure, moderate pressure. So I'm pressing just hard enough to firmly press it. The board is pressing into the pad a little bit but it's not bending the board. And when all said and done, from a left to right horizontal perspective, I'm actually off a little bit. We'll find out when I go to remount it in the new enclosure. All right, reinstall the heat sink clips. Okay, so here's our clip. All right, locate the heat sink retaining clip that you removed, you're gonna put it back in the same way that you took it out. All right, but in reverse. Clip in the third groove from the bottom. Okay, so there's grooves here. We're going to put it in the third groove from the bottom. So putting this back in the way we took it out. All right. This comes down. Third groove from the bottom is this one, and it lines up pretty well. This goes up, down. You can't see what's going on here, but trust me, I'm doing what they're telling me to do. All right. Come on. Now, the trick is I don't have the leverage to get it over. Like I can't twist it and force it through. So what I'm going to do, oh, I don't want to touch the components. All right, so I'm holding it. I don't know if you could see this. It's in the third groove. It's through the main hole, but I've got to lift it up so that it gets through the other one. So I'm going to use a pair of pliers to just pull it up. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Perfect. All right. So once you get it into the hole, you have to like, you sort of fish hook it around to get the little the part of the J through the second hole so it catches. Um, and I can't, with one hand pushing it through, twist it. I don't have enough, the leverage isn't quite there. So I just pushed it through and then grabbed it and pulled it with a pair of pliers. So that works fine. All right, position the main board. All right, so bring the new aluminum enclosure. Actually, let's put this off to the side. Stay safe, my friend. Oh, God, this thing is chunky. All right, there's our new aluminum enclosure. All right, place the new aluminum enclosure on your work surface. Position the main board in the enclosure so that the jacks are lined up with the holes in the rear panel. Be careful not to scrape the underside of the main board on the ends of the Visa mounting screws. One, two, three, four. So these Visa, they've got screws in them. 
already, right? These, if you're gonna go mount this on a visa arm or something, you'll pop these out and that's where they'll go. So it's saying, when you go to place the main board in here, don't drag it across the tops of the screws because they're rough, all right? Um, carefully slide the main board back towards the rear panel so that the jacks go through the holes and the board is flush with the rear panel. Okay, don't force anything. The main board should fit smoothly into the enclosure without any pressure. Um, tip the front edge up slightly if you encounter any resistance. It came out so easily, like it, it could have just fallen out. It was so easy. So I'm assuming that's the same amount of pressure that's going to go in. All right, so line our stuff up. Don't touch it onto the screws. Oh, man, this is old, old man stuff. It's right, <laughs> it's right in that distance where my glasses are. It's too, too close to see clearly, too far to see clearly. So here we go. All right, not touching. Everything slides right in. Okay, that was painless. It went right in. No forcing, no resistance whatsoever. Again, if I were to, without having screws in here, if I was to pick this up, it would just fall out. Yeah, for sure. All right, now, oh, I can see again. Um, the uh, four mounting holes should visibly line up with the screw holes underneath them, right? So if I pull, uh, let me pull a pointer out. So this mounts to the hole below it. This lines up with the hole below it. This lines up with the hole below it. And this lines up with the hole below it. So we're happy. So good. Okay. That was step 27. Step 28. We're going to install the main board. Big red warning. Only tighten screws until they are firmly in place. Do not over tighten them. Aggressive tightening risks stripping the screw or damaging the threads tapped in the aluminum. All right, so we're going to use the two millimeter, which is the smallest uh, hex driver. All right, and there are four M3 by six millimeter pan head machine screws, right, from the parts bag in the main board. So we're going to use those to mount them. Okay. That has an orange bullet next to it, and in the picture, circled in orange, I love whoever did these instructions, is the pan head screws. Okay, so that is these ones. Um, the screws in the system are all completely distinct. They're all black, but they look, there's no way, you, you're not going to confuse them. Like these have pan heads, these have machine heads, these have hex heads with little like knurled edges. You cannot mess them up. And then these ones, um, are, are flat um, hex heads, uh, flat uh, flat heads? I don't know, but they look like wood screws and the others look like machine screws. So this should be fine. All right, so we're gonna use these to screw these in with this and don't over tighten. So hang on a second while I get this out. It always takes me like a minute and a half with my giant ham hands to get these screw bags open. Hang on. All right, these are in. This is tiny. Like I would, with my hands, I, I almost went and grabbed a two millimeter hex driver from my kit. But, you know, just to, just to prove that it can be done with the tools they give you. These screws go into these threaded slots like butter. They're, they're perfect. They No gritty, no grinding, no feeling of you get it two thread turns in and then it sort of locks up and you have to force it through. It just goes in super smooth. So um, don't force it. Now... That's step. Install the main board. Okay, we're done. Next. Okay, we're going to wrap the connector cables. Okay, so these were the connector cables that we used from the previous section, right? And we're going to set this aside for here. We're going to work here. All right. So we've got this uh, length of uh, string of cable wrap. So what does this look like? It looks like netting, or nylon netting, and there's a... It's basically a little tube, but you can unroll the tube, right, and put stuff, you can run cable through. If you have never seen this stuff before, it comes in various sizes, and it's just meant to hold cables in a nice, clean sort of place. But you can open it up, like unwinding it, and it's a channel, and you can just put stuff, uh, put your cables in it. So we're going to wrap these with this to keep it clean and uh, neat. I like that. So... Uh, let's see, they even note that your cable ties that you're going to use here, so we're going to wrap it in here, we're going to put cable ties on each end. These ones are black, it says sometimes they're white, uh, don't worry about it, right? Uh, 
there's no functional difference. So I like it that it you know takes care of the super nerds, right? It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The instructions show it is white. These are black. What do I do? You're okay. All right. So this um, again, this is a task where my big ass hands and fat fingers take a while. So I'm going to pause the video while I do this. Hang on. All right. So this is it. If you know a technique for doing this efficiently, let me know <laughs> if there's a tool that helps with this kind of thing in the future, because I use these cable ties for things like MIDI cables in the studio. These, uh, these cable like sleeve things. Um, but basically it's like, get the wires in here, make sure they're about equally, you know, covered, put the cable ties on to secure them and then just cut off the excess. Right. So we're good to go. Again, medical waste, and here we are. All right, so that's step 29. Um, all right, let's see. Step 30, connect the cables to the main board. All right, so the cables are, they said in the previous step, they're the same connectors on each end. You can't screw it up so that you get them wrong. Okay, uh, so don't panic about that. But reconnect the cables to the connectors CN2A and CN3A, so it's these here, right? And they're different sizes, so you can't make a mistake. The wider one goes in the wider housing, you know, in the socket, right? You should be good to go. Um, and basically, they're keyed, so you can't install them backwards, okay? <laughs> Don't panic. Um, no more of the days of, like, getting red stripe down backwards. Uh, and, um, and they're identical, so it doesn't matter. So let me get these in. Uh, and that's going to take a second. So let me pause. I'll show you the tail end of this. So they're, they are keyed. You can't put them in backwards. It's pretty obvious. Uh, and it's just pressure holding them in. But it's more pressure than I'm comfortable applying. So be careful. There we go. Sort of do one side and then the other. It should be OK. And yeah, they're in. That is somewhat nerve-wracking. All right, I think they're in. Okay, that is step thirty. Mainboard cables connected. Again, I'm not. I'm trying not to touch any components on the mainboard. All right, connect the cables to the front panel. All right, so position the front panel. Let's move my tool. Mise en place. So we're going to pull this down. We're going to go down to our. Precious Bichon Frise dog bed. All right, and we're going to bring this back up. And we can position that at, like so. And here are the two connectors for these babies, right? And that should reach fine, right? We're not struggling to get them there. And position the front panel so that the rear of the enclosure is you know, of the rear of the enclosures by the rear of the panel, right? And it should it should be pretty obvious. Like these aren't going to reach. If you have this backwards and these connectors are over here, it's not going to reach. So I don't think you can fuck it up. Um, and uh, reconnect the other ends to the cable to the white connectors there, right? And again, they're keyed, so you can't mess it up. So let's see if I can do this without having to pause the video. There's one. Mm, this one is always, I feel, I don't like putting this much pressure on it, and I don't want to touch the surface of the circuit board. Mm. One side's in, and the other side's in. They're literally held in with friction, like it doesn't click in. It's not like it goes in and you hear a click. They just sort of go in, and you, there's no space left below them. All right, this one's keyed too, so we can fuck it up. And this one, the smaller of the two clicks, kind of, as it goes in. Or it's got a sort of a, it definitely has a, uh, you know, a clonk. This one just feels like, uh, it feels like I'm sticking something into bubble gum. But they're, they're there. They're firmly attached. So I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so those are reconnected. Yay. That's step 31. Step 32 is install the plastic spacers. That is uh, these little plastic spacers that you do not have to do unless you're doing this on a wave state. And this is a mod wave, so I don't need these. We're going to skip this step. All right. Uh, all right. So step 32 is spacers if you're doing a wave state. I'm not. All right. Step 33. 
align the front panel. So we're going to lift and rotate the front panel to position and position above the enclosure. There's a big fat warning while repositioning the front panel, make sure that the wrapped cable is not caught on or blocking any of the plastic base caps of these things. All right. Um, this stuff here. All right. Um, and uh, basically as the panel is moved, align the front panel with the enclosure and lower it down. The panel should slot neatly into place. Don't worry about any small gaps at this point, but uh, do make sure that nothing inside the enclosure is blocking the panel from being fully seated. All right, so we're going to pick her up. This like this. I'm looking at the side. That seems to be okay. Should slot neatly in. We're just lowering it down. Okay, so the cable wants to fold up the cables like coiling up right here and there is a there is a post there that it's basically saying make sure it doesn't block that post i think that's okay let's see all right so the cable definitely wants to hold it open so i'm just going to move it out of the way buddy all right, so this side of the panel is lifted slightly. I want to make sure that's not because of a thing. It's because cables are, it's just the, the cable itself is nested on top of it. So, or my panel's warped, which I don't think so, but I mean, not warped, but bent. I don't think I bent it coming out. And that is not touching anything. All right, so I'm going to say that's fine. And that'll, if I push it down, I'm not forced anything. Seems okay. Measure twice, cut once. All right, let's look at this again real close. I think that's fine. None of the other cables are doing anything. Seems okay to me. All right, positioned. Step 34, all right, prepare the front panel screws. So we've got these four M3 by 12 millimeter socket heads, right? These like have a little knurled edges, right? And they come with, the bag has little washers in them, right? So we're gonna put the washers on the screws, um, placing one washer on each screw. I'm just gonna include step 35. Like if you've done any modular, you understand about putting washers on hex, on these uh, M3 screws. And then they're going to go in these four holes. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm going to pause while I, again, muck about with giant hands with tiny screws. And I'll get these all ready. Okay, so here's the first snag. Although it's a documented snag. In step 35, you're going to take these M3 screws, put the washers on them, and you're just going to slot them into the, through the holes into the post they're going into. Okay. These are machine screws, so they're going into a hole that's threaded. It should go in real smooth. And they want you to put all the screws in just finger tight, right? And they have a note that says these two lower holes, right, maybe uh, in some of the, I don't know if it was the earlier ones, but basically it's saying some of the threaded holes were mistakenly manufactured to be very tight, especially the holes in the front two screws, these ones, and they highlight them in orange. If you are having trouble getting these in, and I am, they are very tight, right? So from a finger tight perspective, I get them down and then they're like, no, I don't want to go anymore. Um, what they suggest doing is either using a little bit of machine oil or liquid soap on the outside of the screws threads, wipe off any excess before you put it in there. And that says, if you're still having trouble, contact them. What I'm going to do is this is um, 2.5 millimeter hex head. And so I'm going to go grab my 2.5 millimeter hex head uh, screw driver. That'll give me just a little bit more leverage. Um, and uh, so I'll do it with an, instead of using the tiny little driver, I'm going to have a slightly larger driver to give me more leverage, but I'm also going to put a little liquid soap on it. Uh, so hang on a second while I do that. All right. Yeah. So that was scary. So this one over here was really tight. Um, 
And if I didn't have something with a slightly larger, if I was trying to use this tiny little driver, I don't think I could have gotten it in. Um, using this was okay, but it was still the last couple rotations were really, really tight. Um, I didn't, I was, I was worried that maybe the internal threads would be stripped or the post would split. Um, I probably should have stopped, backed off, and contacted them. I don't know if the solution is they've, they'll send a screw with a smaller, either a different thread or a smaller diameter. I don't know. Um, but I got it in. This one was not as bad. It went in pretty easily. I could have done that with the driver. These were felt like machine screws going into a machine thread. They were perfect, right? So it is what it is. Um, uh, and we'll see. We'll see if it matters. I don't ever really plan on converting these back, so I'm not that concerned with it. Um, but what I'm probably going to do on the other conversion kits is pull those machine screws out before I do any disassembly, test them in the post to see how tight they are. And if they're tight like this, I'm going to contact Tall Dog and just call. I'll just email him and say, what do I do? Do I need a smaller thread diameter, you know, a different thread or a smaller diameter screw? What do you want me to do? They're really good people. Um, so, and I was dumb and I powered through on this one, but I think it's fine. Um, nothing. All right, now that we've got the main board in, we need to put the four, uh, the four remaining M3 eight millimeter machine screws into the back panel. All right, so let's do that now. Hang on while I pause, while I get this done. Let's do step 36 is install the bottom screws. All right, so we're looking for the flathead screws, M35 flatheads, machine screws, which are these. And we're gonna turn this over carefully. My dog is talking to me. What time is it? It's about lunchtime for him. So we're gonna put these one, two, three, four, five screws back in there. Let me pause and get that done. Okay, so these are in, um, they're flush, so you know when they're completely done. Yes, I know, it's lunchtime. My dog is below the table saying, feed me, it's noon. Um, so these are self-tapping screws. They look like wood screws, and they go into, there's these plastic sort of plugs underneath, and so you're, they're sort of making their own hole as they go in, and you could tell, you could feel it. As you're drilling in, it, there's a sort of a grainy sort of grinding feel to it. Um, they're countersunk, meaning there's a, like the, the screw is recessed on the plate and it's really easy to tell when you've hit bottom. So when you you go, take your time, they say, you know, be slow about it, make sure they go in straight. But as you're driving the screw in, it's really easy to tell I've hit bottom. It will allow you to keep screwing it, but don't do that. You're going to strip out the uh, the plastic. So, but it's pretty it's pretty easy to uh, tell when they're done. So that's step thirty six. All right, step thirty seven. Power on the device. Here's our cable. That fits cleanly and neatly and firmly, but not tight. Didn't force anything, and we power it on. Korg Modwave. Loading sound data. I think we're okay. I will run it through its paces in the studio. I'm not going to do that right here. I didn't bring a, didn't bring headphones or a launch pad, so. All right. We're good. That looks like that's a working Modwave. So, love it. Time to edit this down, share it out there. For anyone who wants more reference than their instructions, although their instructions are freaking amazing. Uh, I got no issues whatsoever. All right, thanks. Hey, thanks for hanging with me on SynthSeeker. So this was the Tall Dog Electronics uh, Korg ModWave slash WaveState slash um, Op6 conversion kit. It is nice. Uh, even if, ironically, Korg decided to release 19-inch rack-mountable versions, if you have these synths and you want to turn them into desktop units, this works great. Uh, it's totally easy to do. And, uh, and the nice thing is the box that this ships in also has the right foam configuration to become the new case for these things. So 
this will fit in the box and the foam you know has the right holes cut in it for all the knobs and stuff like that so for travel purposes it basically turns their shipping case into a little basically like a gig box gig bag slash gig box makes it easy to move around or ship or whatever so it's cool i think this is the closest to a review you'll ever see on my thing um but uh i like it and i've got two more to do <laughs> we'll see how that goes talk to you later thanks for hanging with me here on sunseeker have a great day